If you want the authentic Windows experience, Windows the way Microsoft intended, before hardware vendors have triaged the system into a stable state using massive patches and proprietary hardware-specific bug fixes, then you should install Windows on your Steam Deck. But the fact is that only the truly masochistic and the morbidly curious would want to observe firsthand the affliction that is Windows 10 on unsupported hardware. So let's talk about this. And first up, I want to put this out there. Valve does not in any way support Windows on the Steam Deck. What does that mean exactly? Well, you'll see by the end of this video. Now, I know that I've already made two videos explaining just how bad of an experience I expected Windows to be on the Steam Deck, but I was actually shocked by how truly awful it was. And I mean shocked. Games were crashing, the OS was hanging, black screens, reboots being required, and tons of hardware devices going completely without drivers. But before we get into the things that I learned with my time with Windows on the Steam Deck, let's first talk about the things that I speculated on. See, being an owner of the GPD Win 2, I knew how just truly bad the Windows UI was when trying to go touchscreen or joystick to mouse. It would be generous to call Windows on the Win 2 serviceable as a PC. More accurately, I would describe the endeavor as mostly just frustrating. See, Windows was designed with the idea of a desktop or a laptop, right? Windows assumes that you have a mouse and a keyboard available, and frankly, so do the games. But on a handheld, this cannot be taken for granted. The GPD Win 2 has a chintzy and awkward keyboard that can be at best described as thumbable. It's not great. And the Steam Deck forgoes this goofy design for a sleek and frankly more approachable form factor. But this means that using Windows and playing games on the Steam Deck becomes a nearly insurmountable task. It's almost as frustrating as using a living room gaming PC without having a keyboard and trackpad combo at the ready. It can be truly infuriating. And having used other handheld PCs like the GPD Win 2 before, I figured, well, hey, I know what I'm getting into here. And to the Steam Deck's credit, the trackpads are a massive step up from the Win 2's meandering and barely serviceable joystick to mouse emulation. But that's about the only compliment that I can give the Windows experience on the Steam Deck. As mentioned, the deck does away with the cumbersome physical keyboard that we've seen on pretty much every other gaming PC handheld. But in the Windows interface, this is nothing short of crippling. If you have a game lock up on you while you're playing it on the Steam Deck on Windows, you can't control alt delete out of the game without a physical keyboard attached. If you forget to launch the game while in big picture mode, then you can't even invoke the Steam overlay without a physical keyboard. And on the rare occasion Windows successfully wakes up after sleep and the game doesn't immediately crash, well, you can't alt tab back into the game without a physical keyboard. Are you starting to see a pattern here? So the experience of using Windows on the Steam Deck means that you will be tethered to a keyboard. And by doing so, you immediately lose the deck's biggest selling point, portability. That's one major point against Windows on the deck. But what about gamepad driven UIs like Big Picture Mode? Well, Big Picture Mode is honestly a massive downgrade from SteamOS's user interface. But not only that, on Windows, Big Picture Mode is behaving quite oddly on this device. For example, the OS will just randomly decide to focus on another app, causing Big Picture Mode to minimize. Not a big deal, right? Just tap the Big Picture Mode icon in the taskbar. But then other times, games will just lose focus and return you to Big Picture Mode. But from here, your route to getting back into the game is far less obvious. Barring using an attached keyboard, you have to return to the home menu and then open the power menu and choose minimize, then tap the game's icon in the taskbar. And by this time, once it's all said and done, you've probably died in the game you were playing. If you had a keyboard attached, yeah, you could alt tab, but we're trying to keep the Windows experience at parity with the portability that SteamOS affords us. So yet another point against Windows on deck. But it's not just the lack of a good user interface. The sleep and wake feature is unstable and unreliable. Imagine playing a game on Windows and then putting the deck to sleep and then not knowing if the game is actually going to recover and pick up where you left off or if the Steam Deck is going to turn back on after sleep. There's also no indication that the pre-sleep cloud sync is happening on the Windows side, but I seriously doubt that it is. And speaking of missing features, 
uh, the quick access menu button has absolutely no functionality in Windows. It does nothing, and none of its features are readily accessible. I seriously doubt that the performance menu that we see on SteamOS is going to make an appearance on Windows even after the deck UI drops on all platforms. Since these settings actually require OS level integration between Steam and Windows, and Windows is an unsupported platform according to Valve. Things like global FSR, frame rate limiting, Mango HUD, and TDP adjustments are all missing here and will probably remain missing from the Steam Deck using Windows. And that's what I expected. But even things like backlight brightness are missing. And not just from Steam, but from the OS itself. It's just not supported yet. I also suspected in my previous videos that battery life would be worse on Windows than on Steam OS. But I wasn't prepared for just how bad it was. Playing Doom Eternal with the default settings and native resolution, it used 12% of the battery after 10 minutes of gaming. Control was about the same. On SteamOS, this was a little less than 8% of the battery life for each game after 10 minutes with the same settings. But that's another issue I had with Windows. The game's settings would randomly change, especially in control. Even if I didn't touch the game's settings, depending on when I launched the game and if the game, if the deck was charging, Sometimes games would launch with different graphical settings and without any rhyme or reason for it. That never happens on SteamOS. Windows also uses just under 4 gigabytes of RAM and is constantly using between 2 and 10% of CPU cycles when idle. This is bananas to me, as the Steam Deck at idle is quite efficient when running SteamOS. SteamOS uses no more than 2 gigs of RAM at idle and between 1 and 5% CPU. That's a pretty stark difference. And it's no wonder that such a lightweight OS runs games better and faster. Windows also habitually refused to charge, even when the charger was attached. I tried both the stock charger and the anchor charger that I bought, and Windows would, and I, I can't stress this enough, randomly refuse to charge. Sometimes it would, but most of the time it wouldn't, simply saying charger attached, and I have never seen that kind of behavior out of SteamOS. Another thing I suspected would be an issue is the OS's storage usage. Windows uses 28 gigabytes after a fresh install of Windows 10. That's an unacceptable 43% of the base 64 gig model's storage. That's 11% of the 256 gigabytes storage. And if left unchecked, Windows will only continue to consume more and more disk space. Good luck dual booting in that case, which is something you simply can't do yet anyway. But let's talk about the things I wasn't expecting. Windows performance here is bad. Spectacularly bad. I impressively bad. Like, I thought maybe we'd see the kind of normal tit-for-tat benchmarks where Linux and Windows would trade, uh, would trade blows outperforming each other. But every game that I tried and every benchmark that I've seen shows SteamOS handily trouncing Windows on the same hardware. And when you think about it, that makes sense. Valve has stated that Windows is entirely unsupported on the deck. They're only providing drivers here as a courtesy. But what this means is that there's almost no financial incentive for AMD to continue supporting the Steam Deck's custom APU on Windows. To me, this means that performance on Windows on the Steam Deck will, in my view, always meaningfully lag behind SteamOS. And I doubt that we'll ever see up-to-date Windows driver releases supporting the latest games like we do on other hardware. And embarrassingly, at one point, Windows prompted me with a warning saying, your drivers aren't up to date, but we can't find newer ones. Plus, right now, you can't even get audio drivers, meaning that you can't plug in headphones or use the speakers on the deck using Windows. That's not to say you can't get any audio out of the device. You can use Bluetooth headphones or a USB-C audio device, but uh, you can't use the built-in speakers on the Steam Deck. But it's not just the drivers that surprised me, it was also the sheer instability of Windows 10. It would be unfair to say that the Steam Deck is capable of running Windows. It might be better to say it trips and falls while running Windows. But again, this isn't Valve's fault. Windows requires an army of hardware developers working around the clock to maintain a semblance of stability, and that's not something that Valve is going to invest their time or money in. At the end of the day, there's one valid option to run on your Steam Deck and that's SteamOS. The fact of the matter is, Windows is an even worse experience than I could have imagined, and I honestly am not too displeased about that. This device was built to run SteamOS, and SteamOS was built for this device. 
If you have reserved a Steam Deck and you intend to only run Windows on it, I would encourage you to reconsider running Windows on here because Windows will never be a first class citizen on this device. And I don't think you'll be happy with your purchase. But I would like to know what you think. Do you have a Steam Deck? Have you tried Windows on it? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to my YouTube members and my patrons, without whom I wouldn't be able to do this, so thank you. I think that's going to do it for this video though. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and share this video with your friends. You can also hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the cool Steam Deck news that we're doing on the channel. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.